Chapter 11 His birthday had come, but his party was not till Friday night. I think it was on a Tuesday, so we had to be in school. He came home with so much stuff. I had to help take some of it home because I didn't want to stay in my locker. This one girl even bought him two new pairs of Jordans. He already had one, but he was okay with that. That night, Ma took Josh and me out to dinner. Quality family time. Isn't that so sweet? Basically, it was the whole week. It seemed like his birthday week. Probably brought him some stuff sent him things. I was actually jealous because I never got that much stuff for my birthday. It was Friday and Josh had to stay after school for something, but I don't remember what it was. I just know when he came home, he had this shocked look. I laughed and said, someone gave you some really bad head? He didn't even flinch. I went up to him and looked him in the eyes and said, what? He said, here. He handed me this sheet of paper, an invitation. It said the time and a place. It was for his birthday. I asked who it was from. He said, Nigel. Nigel, I said. What is this for? He said, Nigel had a party for him. And his brothers. And a couple other friends. I asked him. Are you going? He said. If they make me. Our party was supposed to start at 8. And end well. Until the last person leaves. Ma and I still don't let him know. That he had a party. But I think through word of mouth he found out. But he sure acted like he didn't know. Ma and I arrived at the club around 7 to set up everything. The DJ came out as soon as we did. And as soon as my mom left, I told him, don't play any whack mixes. I don't think he heard me because he couldn't stop staring at me. He kept looking at my neck down and I just wanted to walk off. A couple people started coming at 7.30, but it wasn't too many. I told Derek to bring Josh at 9. The majority of the people would be there already. We would have food like it was Thanksgiving and presents like it was Christmas. And the DJ had all the hits. Ma said she'll leave as soon as Josh gets here. She wanted to see his face when he came. She made an announcement to all the people that were there. If the cops come and kick you out, it's not my fault, and don't bring it to my house. (laughs) Josh showed up, and the lights were off, and Josh said, Derek, why is there no one here? As soon as he said that, everyone yelled, surprise! (laughs) He looked scared as hell, but tried to play it off as saying, I knew y'all had a party planned for me. Ma left, and the grimy party started. Girls were grinding against guys so much. You would think that they were just having sex right there. I kept trying to spray Lysol because it started to smell like straight ass. Around 1 a.m., the food was gone, the chairs were filled, and the air was filled with smoke. Weed and blacks and all they knew. I felt sorry for these two children. The girl brought her newborn and two-year-old and they were knocked out i didn't know why she brought them to a party like this it was two o'clock in the morning and half of the people left and i was so tired but i had to stay until the party was over i had to lock up and make sure everything was clean and the same way we left it it had to be the same way we got it about 15 minutes later a girl and boy walked in The guy was thuggish type and the girl, well, a feminine thuggish type. I'd never seen them before and usually everyone 
notices new people at our school. I just found Josh and asked him, did he know them? And he said, no. I went up to them and said, who are you looking for? Josh, the girl snapped quickly. Where is he? The boy said, why? I asked. The girl put her fist in the other hand and said, we need to get him on his birthday present. Where is he? I asked, why? And then they asked me, who was I? I was like his sister. She smiled, looked at the guy and said, you can come too. Come where, I said. She looked and said, with Josh, with Josh, to get his gifts. I asked where, while I was, saw Josh coming closer. By the time he got there, they figured out who Josh was. I looked at the boy and said, why would you give someone a gift you don't know? The girl breathed and deeply sucked her teeth and said, why do you keep asking so many questions? I did the same thing back and said, he's my brother. Enough said. Josh jumped in and said, why didn't you just bring the gift with you? I said, you know them? He said, no, but a gift is a gift. I rolled my eyes and said, let's go. No, that is not true. But the girl snickered. When Josh and I got into the raggedy car, I told my best friend to watch the party and gave the key to her and said, we'll be back. Josh was talking about something, but I don't remember what. I just remember looking in the back of the car at some of the odd things, like there were no handles in the back of the doors. They put black tape in the back side of the windows and the ceilings. Lord, it had push pins to hold up the material. It looked like a bunch of air pockets about to explode. It felt like we were driving for an hour, but it could have been because it was dark. When we came to a stop, when Josh and I got out of the car, I turned and heard the garage door close. A girl and the guy said, come on. They opened the door and there was a flight of stairs going up and down. The guy said, go up the stairs and you'll get what's coming. I could feel the girl's eyes piercing my back while I followed my brother. I turned around and sure enough, she was staring at me and had this slight smile. We went downstairs in this open dark room with chains hanging in the chair and I knew I might have sound weird, but it smelled like death. Josh and I looked at each other and then it seemed like four people came out the shadows of the walls and two that I recognized, they were the last people on earth I wanted to see, Nigel and Travis. Irvin and Nigel had picked up one of these chains on the ground all of a sudden I read their lips of Travis and he said, get her. The two boys I didn't know grabbed me before I got to move. Travis grabbed my Josh. I was screaming so hard. I don't know if it was a voice that came out of my mouth. They pulled me in a chair and wrapped me with change so much I went numb. And that way they did to my brother. My lips started shivering and my eyes started watering even just telling it again. Nigel raised his arm and hit my brother with a chain. And Travis picked up one and did the same. I shut my eyes and I could hear his screams and could do nothing. I heard bones crack, they stopped. And that's when I opened my eyes. I cried so much. My eyes and throat hurt so bad while I was looking tight through my eyes watery eyes I I could see Nigel bend down to Josh's face and say all those times you said no we took it as a yes just at a later time 
just at the right time, now you're part of this game. And took a blade and slashed his face. They slashed his face from the corner of his mouth to his ear. I don't remember anything for maybe a week after that, but Josh was in the hospital for a lot longer than he was for dehydration. He had two broken ribs, a broken collarbone, a couple broken fingers, and that deep cut on his face. I remember the doctor said he might be paralyzed. I didn't say a word. Ma said, I can't lose him too. About two months later, Josh was back on the field. Not MVP anymore, but on the field. He still was going to therapy for his fingers and, and ribs and checkups and constantly for his collarbone to see if there was healing correctly. And if they weren't, they would have to re-break it again and start all over. Sometimes I could hear him scream at night because he rolled over on his ribs. Nobody ever talked about Josh getting jumped in. It was just something you didn't talk about.